When choosing a weapon class to explore in Elden Ring, different people are going to look for different things. And for me personally, I really do enjoy exploring the weapon classes with the most variety. And if there's one weapon class with a ton of variety, it's got to be the straight swords. There's a total of 19 straight swords in the game, and I'm going to be using each of them just for you guys. And for all you guys wondering, yes, there will be some sword and board action in this video. Let's get straight to it. For the first non-enchanted straight sword of the day, we have the short sword. I'm going with Keen Affinity and Square Off for my Ash of War. Get a scaling in Dex, which is nice. And yes, this weapon does live up to its name. It is, in fact, the shortest straight sword out of the entire weapon class. However, range isn't a massive factor when it comes to picking a straight sword because all of them have similar ranges. And here is the basic two-hand move set for straight swords as well as the one-handed move set. Now, something cool about the short sword is it actually has a completely unique heavy attack string with the double thrust attack. You got the backstep attack, you got the rolling attack, which is also a thrust, and then you have the running light, then the running heavy, then the jumping light, and then the jumping heavy. And the Ash of War square off is a stance Ash of War, so you just hold down your Ash of War button, and then you have a light attack option, or you have a heavy attack option. Frenzy Pillager, hello, how you doing? Great Spear, this could be a very tough matchup. Oh, oh, okay, hold on, I like that damage. That square off damage, not bad. Bro, even the light attack version, hold on, bro. Oh, that was good. Oh, damn it. I really want to hit this uh, unique heavy. It might be a little bit too risky to go for, though. Ooh, I like that rolling thrusting attack, too. That feels very, very nice. Honestly, dude, two-handing a straight sword? Feeling pretty great. Oh, that was clean right there. I like that. The jump away. We got a close fight here, Frenzy Pillager. Oh no, don't do it to me. Please don't do it to me. Good fight, dude. Oh my lord. That was, uh, that was pretty intense at the end there. Okay, this actually felt genuinely amazing to use. I was staggering, I was doing solid damage, and this is one of the lesser straight swords out there. Like, it isn't the worst, but it is nowhere near the best, and it was putting in some work, I can't lie. Next up, we have the Cane Sword. I went ahead and put Keen Affinity on there, as well as Impaling Thrust for the Ash of War. And there really is not much to the Cane Sword, I guess, besides the unique rolling attack, which not a fan of. I mean, you do get it whether you're one-handing or two-handing, but I don't know. It's just really not that good. You got the heavy attacks, basically just a double slash. And I'm actually going to be power stancing Cane Swords. Here is what the moveset looks like. Got the jumping attack, got the running attack, and the rolling attack is nice too. For all you players who have done PvP at some point, you have probably gotten melted by Power Stance Straight Swords. It's just gonna happen. It's always been a very, very strong setup, even with the Cane Sword, which is literally the second worst Straight Sword in the entire game. Oh, that hit. And I also have, like, a weird history with this weapon. Where, like, I've used it quite a bit just in meme builds, but... I'm telling you right now, dude, it's just, it's just straight up not good. You're just gonna get more damage output out of a lot of other straight swords. Again, even though I said range isn't a huge factor, you're just gonna get more range. <laughs> hey, good fight, Alistair. But no, I'm really just not a fan at all of the cane swords. Power stanced, one-handed, two-handed, even in your offhand, like, I don't care. I just don't like the weapon. Because whenever you just look at the straight sword weapon class as a whole, and then you look at the cane sword, there is simply zero reason to use this weapon, unless you want it for thematic purposes, I guess. Now, this next straight sword is unlike the last two, in which it is actually one of the better straight swords. It is the Noble's Slender Sword. I'm going with Lightning Affinity and Sword Dance. 
And yes, I'm going to be running this sword and board style. I just randomly went with the Eclipse Crest heater shield. Don't ask me why. And the Noble Slender Sword is actually the longest straight sword in the entire game. And you know, it just has your typical straight sword move set. However, whenever you one hand this weapon, the heavy attacks are a thrust and then a slash. However, whenever you two hand it, it's just a double slash. Ooh. Oh, damn it. I went for it. I went for the guard counter. Let's finish this off with a uh, sword dance, shall we? Ooh, I knew it. I knew he'd bite. Good fight, Sam. And I am a huge fan of the Noble Slender Sword, but there's something I just forgot to mention to you guys that it's going to be a little bit discouraging. If you want to get your hands on a Noble Slender Sword, it can be dropped by wandering nobles found in Limgrave, Rhea Lucaria, and Kaled with a whopping 0.5% chance to drop at base discovery. So for all you guys who are about to go farm for this, good luck to you. All right, let's just get this one out of the way now. Here I have the worst straight sword in the game, the weathered straight sword. Going with heavy affinity and lion's claw because I think it's funny. And this straight sword has nothing going for it at all. The moveset, everything is just basic. There's nothing unique about it. Just bad AR and scaling across the board. Legitimately, nothing about this sword is good, but let's go see what we can do. Who do we have here? Faithful Man. Okay, that was a running heavy. I mean, the damage wasn't awful there. I won't lie. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, he just stood there and took it. Good fight, faithful man. Okay, so I guess we're in the timeline where a two-handed weathered straight sword can destroy people. I don't really know how I feel about that. <laughs> Anyways, next up is the broadsword. I'm going with heavy affinity and barbaric roar. And I actually do have two of these, so I am going to be power stancing. And the broadsword gets the double slash heavy attack string. But of course, if you use barbaric roar, you will have access to the enhanced heavies. And here's what they look like. But let's go see if we can land those. All right, who do we have here? Ashley, hello. What is good? I was not about to get caught up in that frostbite. Ain't no way. Come on, I gotta land this. I gotta. <laughs> oh my god, dude. That damage is so absurd. Good fight, Ashley. I'm telling you, man, the heavy broadsword is just a force to be reckoned with. Like, don't trip about it. It can work with other affinities, but I just think strength pure broadsword is the way to go. Especially those barbaric roar heavies. You end up hitting those, you are wamboing and comboing somebody for all their health. Hey, but let's just keep flying through these. Next, I have the Lord Sworn Straight Sword with Cold Affinity and Repeating Thrust for the Ash of War. So we're getting a little bit weird here. And I'm also running this as a sword and board setup. And just as the Slender Sword and the Weathered Sword, whenever you one hand this weapon, you do get the Thrust and then the Slash Heavy Attack String. But if you two hand it, you just get the Double Slash. And I am rolling with Repeating Thrust because after the last patch, it has gotten a lot better. It is a very, very usable Ash of War now. And I just have a feeling on a fast weapon like a straight sword, it's going to be pretty strong. All right, who do we got here? Rem. Hello, Rem. Yeah, that's right. I got that sword and board. Okay, okay. He has frost balluses. Gotcha. Use of the hyper armor. I'm actually shocked that that did not roll catch me. 
Oh, damn it. Oh, that's right. Oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. I had a feeling. I really had a feeling that repeating thrust was going to be fire. That was like an instant frost proc because he had just eaten a ballus. Ah, oh, dude, yeah, that felt really, really nice. Next, we are rolling with a fire longsword with flaming strike as the ash of war. And the longsword is essentially the Lord Sworn sword, except for the fact that it just scales better into the late game. And the moveset is similar to the Noble Slender Sword, where if you two-hand it, you get the double slash. But if you're one-handing it, you get the poke, and then the slash. Oh, oh, I... wait. Okay, wait, which hit hit? The Unsheath? I like it. Oh, nice. Oh, very, very clean. Oh, oh, the jump, dude. Good fight. Oh, my Lord. Shout out to Blue for being very clean with that Nagakiba. But I swear, every time I use Flaming Strike on a setup, it just feels so strong. Get that really nice lingering hitbox. If somebody's knocked on the ground, you can use it on wake up. You can use it defensively. You can hit multiple targets, not only with the initial flame burst, but the heavy follow up as well. You can really do some mind games with it. It is just a spectacular Ash of War, and I just love it on this longsword. And here we have the eighth and final non enchanted straight sword, and what is my personal favorite non enchanted straight sword, the Warhawk's Talon. And I'm rolling with a Blood Affinity and Bloody Slash. And if you have the Rampart Tower side of Grace, there are four birds just outside the door that you can farm to try to get this weapon. And I will honestly tell you that this weapon is 100% worth farming for just because of the unique heavy attacks. And with Bloody Slash in the mix, I think we're going to be getting roll catches for days. Hello, who is this? Comrade. What's good? Rocking the Ronin armor, I like it. Oh my god. Bloody slash. <laughs> Come on, dude, just let me hit this heavy attack. Ow. <laughs> hey, good fight, comrade. Seriously, just go farm yourself a Warhawk's Talon. Screw it, even get two. Farm two. Put in the time, because it will definitely be worth it. And that is officially it for the non-enchanted straight swords. Now it is time to move on to the enchanted ones. But before we do that, just a quick reminder to click that subscribe if you are enjoying the content and want to see more in the future. And the first magical sword that we are using today is the Lazuli Glintstone Sword. And the Ash of War that comes on it is Glintstone Pebble. This is yet another straight sword that has unique heavy attacks. Every other attack is just your basic straight sword attack, though. Whenever you use a heavy attack, you see how you hold the sword in front of you? Well, that is actually a blocking animation. So yes, you can block an attack with your sword and counterattack. However, it is super, 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 super risky, considering you can just easily get guard broken. It just eats so much of your stamina to block one attack from pretty much anything using these heavy attacks. Ooh, okay, maybe, maybe we could hit the heavy here. The blocking heavy. Oh, wait. <laughs> hey, we just tanked two straight sword attacks. I feel like that's the limit. I That fight that fight felt really laggy. I don't even know. Hey, GG, man. All right, I'm just going to cut to the part where I land the Ash of War. <laughs> hey, there we go. Okay, like a thousand damage. Not bad. Can't really complain. Doesn't really seem like super easy to hit. Oh, um, uh, you, you gonna finish me? You gonna, uh, you gonna finish me off? No? <laughs> I 
And listen, I don't think that the Lazuli Glintstone Sword is bad necessarily. However, there is another Enchanted Straight Sword that is basically just a better version of it. It's the Carrion Knight Sword, and it is found in a chest in the back of a carriage being pulled by two trolls in Northwest Liernia. And on this sword, you do get the blocking heavy attacks. But the main reason why I do say that this is a better version of the last sword that we used is because of the Ash of War change. Instead of Glintstone Pebble, you get Carrion Grander, which has three different stages. There's the first, second, and here is the third. Okay, I cannot tank a Colossal Sword with Grander. Noted. Good fight. So do you see why I like this better than the Lazuli sword? In my opinion, it is simply the better version. But honestly, both of these swords, I can appreciate. I think I think they're both good. Okay, now these next two enchanted swords are virtually identical, except the only difference is one does slightly more damage than the other, and one of them also does 50 rot build up a hit. The swords I am talking about are the Crystal Sword and the Rotten Crystal Sword. Both of them come with Spinning Slash for the Ash of War. And as you can see, the Scarlet Rot buildup isn't just Scarlet Rot buildup, it's actually slight Scarlet Rot buildup, so it's not going to be as potent as normal Scarlet Rot. Both variations just look like they should be a lot better than they are. You pretty much never see anybody use these weapons. Well, actually, now you might see more people use them because Spinning Slash is actually a lot better. So real quick, I'm going to just knock out back-to-back -back fights using the normal ones and then the rotten ones. Let's go see what we can do. Oh yeah, and the rotten ones do slightly less damage than the normal ones, by the way. All right, who is Dees? Day? Hello, Day. Ooh, you're using the ornamental straight swords. We're about to get to those. All right, let's see. See what you got. Okay, solid damage. Oh. Hey, <laughs> good fight, Day. I mean, honestly, the damage that we were getting there from the Crystal Swords wasn't too bad. Let's just move on to the Rotten Ones. Ball Z, how you doing? Good fight but see doesn't that kind of suck doesn't that kind of suck that like you just can't even proc what what slight scarlet rot you can't even proc it in pvp it's like not doable you can't do it but i mean whenever it comes to these swords the damage output is still pretty solid and now that spinning slash is actually a very viable ash of war i think these swords have kind of bumped up a tier but that's the same for any sword that can use spinning slash so i mean they're not that special because of it on one hand, I wish these weapons had more to them, but on the other hand, I can understand why they're so simple. And now for this next sword, I can't really tell if I want to go sword and board or just two-hand it. I guess I'll just decide mid-fight. But here we have the McKellen Knight Sword, and I'm aware that the scaling may be a little bit off-putting, but trust me, this weapon can actually put in some work. Because this moveset is very, very nice. I mean, the light attack string is just your normal light attack string, but the first heavy attack... I mean, just look at this. Look how much distance you get on that. So fast, so swift. Crouching attack is a poke, which is very, very nice. Oh yeah, and the Ash of War that comes on it is Sacred Blade, which, you know, I, I know can be kind of disappointing because it's not a super unique Ash of War or anything, but I personally am a big fan of Sacred Blade. I think it's very, very solid. Ooh, okay, I think I can whip out the shield for this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, imagine. Oh, yeah. There we go. Sacred Blade. Hua! Ow. Oh, he has the Blade of Calling. Nice, dude. I like it. Got the whole yin and yang thing going on. I can appreciate that. 
Good fight. And yeah, as you can see with this heavy attack and Sacred Blade, you have a lot of roll catching potential. Just such an enjoyable weapon to use, not to mention the way it's designed. I mean, look at that detail. Now, for all you guys who are looking for a very, very unique enchanted straight sword, look no further than the ornamental straight sword. Or should I say the ornamental straight swords? Because as a matter of fact, whenever you two-hand this weapon, you actually just get two swords. And if you use the Ash of War gold tempering while you're power stancing these weapons, and then you use heavy attacks, this is what you get. And you don't even have to do that whole thing. You can like cut it a little bit short, or you can just tap your heavy attack button and do the final attack outright. And not only that, you also get a unique jumping attack, which is pretty sweet. Melina Simp, hello, how you doing? Oh wait, can I buff my weapons real quick? Thank you. All right, here we go. Okay, so no hyper armor on that final attack there. Oh yeah, I forgot about the unique running heavy you get whenever you have gold tempering on. Like this double thrust. It honestly does solid damage. Oh, oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> Hold on, let's see if I can maybe blend the jumping attack into the standing light attack. Oh, that's exactly what I wanted. Good fight. Sadly, we did not hit a charged heavy attack there. And I'm just going to let you know, at least in PvP, hitting a fully charged heavy is kind of hard because it still does not stagger enough to the point where you can land like the entire thing. So I feel like whenever you have the buff on, you really are just better off going for uncharged heavies instead. Next, we have the Golden Epitaph and its unique Ash of War Last Rites. And as for the moveset, you know, it's just your basic straight sword moveset. And I'm just gonna let you know right now, this is definitely more of a PVE weapon. It is fantastic at taking out undead mobs in this game, especially whenever you use the buff Last Rites which lasts 60 seconds, costs 25 FP, and makes it so you deal 100% damage to undead type enemies, and you prevent skeletons from reviving. The armament also gains a flat 25 holy damage, and armaments are buffed by 10% for all damage types, and that is 5% in PvP. It's really just a cool looking undead slayer, basically. All right, who we got? Breathtaking. I mean, I, I don't even think I'm going to, like, win with this sword. I'm not really sure, like, what to expect. Ow. Okay, 314 damage. Okay. I mean, you know, not bad. Nothing too crazy, though. Oh. Got catch flame, I see. Ooh, good fight, breathtaking. And yeah, there's really not much that I have to say about this weapon. It is a very cool looking sword that has a cool, unique purpose. But outside of what it's meant to do, you know, it's just kind of mid. Okay, see, now we're getting to the really juicy enchanted weapons. I'm hype. Up next, I'm rolling with dual wielded coated swords. As you can see, these weapons only do holy damage, so you only have to put points into faith. And to keep it simple, the Coated Sword is absolutely terrifying just on its own, but you power stance these bad boys, and uh, it can get really, really ugly for your opponents very, very fast. And its Ash of War Unblockable Blade does indeed live up to its name. If you try to shield this Ash of War, it is not going to work. You get quite a bit of range on it. And it, I think it's just a solid Ash of War in general. You really can't complain about a weapon art that extends your weapon's length. The Revere TTV. Hello. Oh my god, dude. Oh, you got Spear Throw. Hey, I respect it. Good fight. I'm not gonna lie, the Coated Sword is just pretty busted. It is a crazy, crazy weapon. The Coated Sword might just be the best faith weapon in the game. And up next, we have what is one of the most broken PvP weapons in the entire game, 
some could argue it is the most broken pvp weapon we have the sword of saint trina and the reason why this weapon is so broken in pvp is because it can proc sleep and basically you can proc sleep through rolls and it will still have the stun effect that it would if you just normally proc'd it by actually hitting your opponent. So if your opponent doesn't have sleep bolluses, the entire fight you are building up to sleep that is guaranteed to proc, and you are guaranteed free damage no matter what. Oh yeah, and then the Ash of War Mist of Slumber just buffs your sleep buildup. It also just looks cool. Like here, just watch what I'm about to do to this man. Oh, there we go. See, like, look at that. He just fell asleep and he rolled through the attack. It is total BS. Just simply a broken weapon. It ri- Wait, did he- Wait, did he just alt F4? I think he did. I think he alt F4'd. I don't even blame him because this shit is broken. For the second to last straight sword of the day and my personal favorite straight sword out of the entire weapon class we have the regalia of aokade i don't think i'm pronouncing that totally right and i am going to be running it sword and board style and if you are a fan of the moraeus executioner's sword you're definitely going to be a fan of this weapon because it actually has the exact same weapon art and since the drill part of the Ash of War is multiple hits, you can take full advantage of successive attack buffs. And it also is a chargeable skill, so you can take full advantage of the Godfrey icon as well. Oh my god, is that nuts from Berserk? No way. Oh, damn it. Oh my god, dude. If we would have hit the final slash there... Dude, I, I, I think we would have gotten, like, what, 1,500 damage, probably? Maybe more? Who knows, dude? That could have been an instant kill if we would have hit the entire thing. Damn. Good fight. Almost got me with that parry. Damn, and he had three HP left. That is crazy. But it's just so good to see that the straight sword version of the dancing blade weapon art is going to pretty much stagger all the time now. I think it may be a bit harder to hit than the great sword version just because of the hitbox. But no, I could definitely see people using this weapon a lot more in the near future. Now, everyone, we are on to the last straight sword of the day. It is what some will probably consider to be the flashiest and most baller straight sword out of the bunch. The sword I am talking about is the Sword of Night and Flame. And yes, this is an intelligence faith weapon. And of course, you've got to appreciate the detail on this weapon. I mean, it just looks so, so clean. And not only is the look of it eye-catching, the Ash of War Night and Flame stance is definitely eye-catching as well. So you hold down your weapon art button and you get into the stance. And the light attack option is this Comet Beam. Which does damage based on your intelligence. And then the heavy attack variant is the Flame Burst. Which can just wipe out a huge crowd of enemies. And that will do more damage the more faith that you have. And I just think it's really cool how they designed this weapon. You know, you can go a little bit of both. Dip your toes into the night and the flame. You can go full flame. You can go full night. Really whatever you want. Hello. You have the dragon great claw and a buckler. That's very interesting. Let's uh, let's make this a good fight. Oh, oh my god. A thousand damage? How did that just do a thousand damage? That's kind of insane. Oh, he almost got the backstab. And see, that is the other thing about the weapon art. It is pretty easy to backstab somebody after they do it. It doesn't really matter which version you do, the heavy or the light. And good fight, Troglodyte. Oh my god, look at that sticking out of my head. Is that- oh, that's a bone. Yeah, that's a bone dart. And I already know this video is going to be very long, so I'll keep this outro short and sweet. I think after this most recent patch, 
straight swords are viable no matter which way you use them sword and board power stanced or just two-handed you can just ball out with whatever straight sword you want to use even the quote unquote worst ones can still put in work that is in pvp and pve make sure to comment your favorite or least favorite straight sword down below if you enjoyed the video smash the like and as always if you'd like to see more content like what you saw here today Make sure to press that subscribe and that noti bell. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all your support. Just take it easy out there, and I will see you in the next one.